Hello. Hello, what's your name? Karina Jordan. All right, Ms. Jordan, you're here today. This is an adjourned date on a landlord tenant case for not paying the rent. Um, oh, we'd adjourn this for the plaintiff to work on some repairs. So it says today that there's still some issues that the landlord needs to do. What does that say? I'd have to read it. I, I don't Plaintiff know. needs but I, I can translate something it of something from defendant well, we and need... date for plaintiff to make repairs. A list of repairs. Yeah, we need a list of repairs and dates for access. We've, um, Mr. Landau personally has reached out to the defendant, but we've, uh, we've not been able to respond. And without that, we can't effectuate the repairs that are being requested. Was, we don't even have that list to know what exactly needs to be. Drag it a little bit, so we'd like to get a deadline for that okay. information to be sent over to us. So, well, that sounds fair. Uh, do you have the list? Yes, um, your honor, um, Mr. Landlord, Mr. Uh, Landlord, he has Landon. Landon. he received. I have emails, he always received response. They have on February of this year, they received a list via the city of Southfield, the inspection results. That's the list. That was the list of everything that they found in the inspection that they needed to do. One, um, one thing that they needed to fix was supposed to be fixed six days after I moved in two years ago, which is a which is a safety hazard. And all they continue to do is switch management, switch um, lawyers. I don't know who I'm talking to, like the landlord. Mr. Yeah, Mr. Landlord. Landau's been there for yeah, a while. Yeah, he's been, I've been. Um, but he normally sends somebody. Yeah, and I, I met with him here the first time, and then we've been emailing because I told him, you know, I am tired of them sending people to do inspections. Like, you guys know what needs to be fixed. The city of Southfield, I had to pay them to come out. They've been out twice. They give me the results and they gave them a copy of the results. I don't understand what else they need. You have the results from the city. Fix what you, you came, you measure things, you look at things because the city gave them 30 days. They came and they measured things and they checked everything that, that, that was on that list. And then I haven't heard back from them. But since I've come to court, now they're running on it on my credit report. Now they're sending me letters saying eviction, but nobody's come out to fix what the city of Southfield put. I mean, they well, have they gave them the list. Let's find out, Mr. Joseph. Why don't you have a list from the city? Have, we don't have a list from the city on May 28th. You don't have the letter that she says we don't. We haven't been able to get it, but we did. Mr. Lando reached out on the 28th and I talked to Crossroads. 20th of May, I'm requesting for Ms. Jackson to provide that list or even take a picture of it and text it to him. He gave her his personal cell phone number. All she had to do was take a picture of it and text it to him. She didn't. He then reached out on the 31st of May and addressed I'm Ms. Jackson. Sorry. I'm sorry, Jackson. I'm sorry. Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> Where did he do that? Miss Jordan, I'm sorry. Um, so we just haven't, we don't have access to to that report, <laughs> just trying to get a copy. Oh, you can call the city and get the report. So, I you, John. John. My thing is this: I am, I have my rent, and I told them I spoke with the landlord personally. She agreed with me. I don't know if she's an assistant if she's gone now, because this is ridiculous. Um, now it sounds like I've been here for two years. I've been patient. The attorney general. I have a letter from them. They sent them a letter last year saying, hey, these things need to be fixed. They told me, they sent me a letter, and I have all that, saying that um, they won't respond to me. You might need to do a civil case. I was patient because every time I go in there, oh, we're under new management. So now I pay in January, and nothing has happened. And now they're talking about, he emailed me. I don't have his personal number. However the case, you're not going to put that on me. It's unprofessional. You have the city of Southfield sent you. You're representing a company, a business. And if they're not keeping up with their records, they're constantly keeping up with the amount of rent that's not being paid, where I have my rent. But I told the lady and Mr. Landlow, 
I'm tired of people coming in. I'm taking off work today. I'm taking off work. I'm tired of people coming in saying, oh, let me see what needs to be done and not doing anything. So, and at this point, we don't need another inspection. I paid for the city to do one. They need to come and make the fix, fix everything. And, and you can see, I have records that I have all the money. I don't have issues paying my rent. I have issues paying rent at a place where they're constantly, it's, it's the, the whole property is going down. They don't keep it up. But what is your lease up? My lease will be up. So I re-signed in, in February. Maybe because they just let you out the lease. I re-signed because they told me that they were under new management and they would fix these things because I had gone to the city. So now that was, uh, I think, February or March. So my you thing want is, to stay? My thing, I have to find a place. I, I'm, I'm on workers' time. I'm going through some physical things. So now I have to up and move because we don't have to. I mean, just I'm to. just trying to stay until I can find somewhere because I am also going through some personal things, and it's not easy to just up and move. But if I have to, if they're telling me that they're not going to fix these things, then I'll start. I don't, I don't hear that. I just hear that they're not doing a very good job of calling the city and asking for the report and getting the copy. From the beginning, I mean, that's the real year. easy. If that's the only repairs. If, if that is the entirety of it, and that's a representation you get in court, that's what we will saying. get a copy of it. I'll have my client make sure that they, they secure a copy of it. But we still need access to the property. So she can either provide some dates for us or make the representation to the court that they can come over with whatever 24 hour notice. She doesn't mind. She, okay. What she's saying is, don't have them come over there and talk about we need to see again. Right. You, and I have email copies. I'm sorry. I have email copies where I told Mr. Landlaw when the date that they have someone to come make these fix, to fix these problems, I will be here. If I have to take off work like I've been doing, but I do not have time for anybody else coming looking around for nothing, just to postpone and procrastinate. If you can tell me a date, where you can have you two. All right, well, just put it on them. Then. And I need to be you. There. All you need to do then, Mr. Joseph, once you get the list, is call her with a date. If she says she will make it happen. A date for repair, not a date for another look around or inspection or see what we need to do. Hopefully they got everything they need to yeah. repair. Well, they took the uh, they took this thirty days after because the city gave them thirty days, so they had to do within that time to come and say what they were going to do and how they took measurements. They took pictures. So they do have some. They information. they had. Them. I don't know what management is dealing with it now, but they had those things. And, and there was that is accurate. There was a change in management, and so there, mm -hmm. there was likely some disconnect. probably got lost. There was likely some disconnect, and I know um, there's another. Individual Ms. Jackson, who I'm reading these notes when I was addressing Ms. Uh, uh, Ms. Jordan here, but a similar situation. So they are working on it uh, for the repairs. So I don't know what you're going to want to do in terms of the timeline here. Um, but uh, well, uh, let's see. Let's give another date long enough out where something can get done. You yeah, are going to ask you one question. Yeah, um, we'll make one more statement. Um, I've, I've been there two years and they can change in management every time a situation arises. My thing is this, I want to make sure they understand that my rent is in, is in the bank, a separate escrow account okay. until the repairs are made and it will continue to go in the... All right, I'm, I'm good with that. That's what the law says you should be doing. So Judge, if you want to go a little further out, you could have August 8th or August 22nd at 10 o'clock. Is August 8th good? I prefer to stay July, Judge. July 25th. That's fine. July 25th. You think you're going to have them fixed by July 25th? No, they haven't been fixed since January. <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry. This one particular thing hasn't been fixed since I moved in on 2020. I'll go with August the 8th. You know, I, I'm not worried about her paying her rent. Mm -hmm. I'm just worried about your client moving quickly. So August the 8th, they should have something done. What, what time, time is it, Mark? 10 o'clock. 10 a.m. And so we have an agreement that the plaintiff is to call the defendant to give a specific date for entry or repairs. 
And you're going to do that from your office, right? It's not going to be the landlord. It's going to be the lawyer's office. Because Mr. Landau's been involved in this. Well, whatever the court prefers, I, I would say. Well, I want to, I want you all to do it. So that, therefore, I can hold you all accountable. Because yeah. I don't know who the landlord is. Right. Well, the, the issue for us is that we don't have access to the schedule for maintenance. And, well, you all can call. And so it would become. You have client control. Your client can say, we can fix it on this date. You can say, okay, that sounds good. And then you guys can call. Yeah, I mean, that's fine if that's what the court uh, prefers. That's fine. Thank you. So the next date for us is August the 8th at 10 a.m. And uh, we'll see everybody back here then. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Norm Blender appearing on behalf of the uh, Plaintiff American Standard Group. Okay, and what's your name? I'm Sharita Moore, Your Honor. Okay, and uh, so this is a motion. It was a motion to set aside a default judgment previously filed. We were here on June 10th and no one appeared for the defense. So what had happened was there was a notice that was went through the on base system for graduation, which came through, I guess, on June 4th, but it didn't get processed in time by the clerk. So we didn't know. We had just gotten it during the hearing. So we just reset it and re-noticed it for today. Okay, so that's what happened. And so let's see. Now you're asking the court to set aside a judgment. And this was a default judgment entered when? Let's see, it was entered. By the clerk, April 22nd. And it was for $15,141.57. Okay. So, says they said, well, looks like they served you by alternate service. That's what the registered action says. I don't. Have that document. Okay. They have some. Justin, can you make me a hearing check? Because I, I don't have the, all the documents. Okay. Okay. This is on American Standard versus more. And I'm looking, what I'm looking for is the uh, proof of service. Uh, it's right here on it. Where, let's see, I don't have it in my bench. So there's no. <clears throat> so there was a proof of service on the complaint that they did it by tacking on March 13th at 2.01 p.m. at the Spring Hill Drive address. And I show a picture of it tacked to the door. So that's one. It was a motion for alternate service, allowing them to do other things than serve you personally. <coughs> And that was because they made several attempts to find you and didn't, weren't successful. So they asked for that. And let's see. So then alternate service was ordered by first class mail, tacking at your address, and then certified mail.
at the proof of service for the posting. Okay, well, what I don't see in here, I see proof of service on the tacking, but I don't see a proof of service on first class mail or certified mail return receipt. Do you happen to have that? Um, I don't, uh, I'm looking everywhere. Else. Yes, Your Honor. It's attached as Exhibit G. To what? To our uh, brief in opposition to this motion to set aside. Why wouldn't it just be filed? We should have it just as a simple filing, you know, once you serve. Um, uh, it's my understanding that that was done. If, if I may, Your Honor, Judge, with respect to the tacking on the floor. That I got. Right. We did get a call. I got a call from Ms. Moore right after that occurred. And she did complain about the tacking on the floor. And I suggested, you know, as politely as I could, because I'm not her lawyer, my best advice would be to get that to a lawyer immediately. So she did get the, the complaint. Did she get it? And that's how she got my got the, number. I got the complaint when I got back home. So it was after everything was over. And when I contacted him, I contacted him because I spoke with someone at American Santa Rubin, and they me me and the manager actually I made a payment and we had me and me him and the insurance company got on three-way call and got everything so resolved. That's when I contacted him and he told me get a lawyer. She received my number from the complaint. That's how I knew she had received the complaint and told me it was tacked on the floor, which we did get the alternative service. We also mailed it. Certified mail and regular mail. Mm -hmm. that, that's what I don't yeah. have the proof of services on. I don't know why. But, um, I have looked at every get, When I did get the call from her, of course, we did. I did give her time. I mean, that was the day she was served, the day she called me that she got the complaint and the requisite number of weeks went by and nothing. Well, we ma'am, you didn't respond. Well, no, I, I didn't get, I would, see, I'm a licensed realtor from here. I stay in Georgia and Michigan. I wasn't here. When I got back, that's when everything, because it was a transition in my family. So I was down there at home. I come back. That's when everything was transpiring. That's when I called American Center Roofing. I called, contacted him. He did tell me to get a lawyer. But the well, okay, well, we can't say you weren't served. So we can't say that there was lack of jurisdiction if you were actually served. Constantly. But that was after the judge, after the court date. Well, that was after. No, no, you were served before the judgment even got entered. Okay, you have to be served before we even enter a judgment. But no, but I wasn't served because I, I wasn't here. That's what I'm well, talking. no. Oh. What you're not understanding is there's a difference between serving you personally and you getting it in your hand and us tacking or having them tack. Send it by mail. You could get it by mail, right. first class, or certified, and just never pick it up. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. and you yeah. still serve, right? Yeah, and so tacking on your door is still service. It's still good, even if you didn't know like, anything about it. You got you right. All right. So we can't say you don't. We don't have jurisdiction because I think that was done properly. You just didn't get it. Yeah. Although he did say he gave you some extra time to try to respond. When you called him, but he did not advise me of that. Okay. So that's that's no. well. You had a right to try to file some type of response. Okay, you didn't do that. The reason was you're out of town. Okay, yeah. I get that. What is your meritorious defense to the claim that you owe American Standard whatever the amount of money is? Um, well, because me and American Standard Roofing, um, it was the amount even in this. In this uh, the motion. Yeah, the, the, the original complaint. complaint says that they that you owed them uh, twenty or well, some, something in excess of twenty five thousand dollars. Right, which we can't give you no, in but, uh, excess of twenty five thousand dollars. Some, something, oh, okay. us, um, something not in excess. Is that what it, it was? Says? It was fifteen thousand. Not in excess. Okay, all right. So in the complaint, it states that the insurance company paid the entire claim, which is false. And I have um, documentation from the insurance company that showed the payments that was paid out. Um, me, American Standard Roofing, and the insurance company, which is Eastern, on a three-way call because it's, um, insurance provided me with statement balances that was all different 
types of mops, 16,000, 14,000, 9,000. So I was going back and forth with them, asking them, what is the accurate amount? Because this is not the amount that insurance paid me. So um, I see names in here that I never spoke with. The um, only person I dealt with there was Zach. So when me, Zach, and insurance got on the line, which was for um, April the 19th, we agreed at that time and he spoke on the phone with the um, agent. Who was he? Uh, I'm sorry, Zach, mm -hmm. which is from American Santa Roofing. She explained to him that these are the payments that was made. He understood at that point. I did withhold a six thousand dollar check, which is the last check, because of the discrepancies of the amounts that they they gave me. Once we was all in agreement, that's when I paid. It. So. Do you know about that? Uh, it's set forth in our motion. There was a check after we went through all this, paid in the amount of six thousand, but that is inconsistent. We're we're reducing whatever is owed on the default judgment by that amount. But judge respectfully, the the amount set forth in the original complaint, which she did acknowledge receiving by a tacking on the door, even if she hadn't, this clock would still begin to um, tick when we posted it, but she got it and called me and I suggested um, firmly that she get a lawyer and she had time to get a lawyer. We didn't seek the default before the number of days went by and we did not hear from her. She knew my client was represented we're not seeking to double dip any payments here. Whatever she paid and is indicated in our uh, response to her motion to set aside will be deducted from any default judgment. But she has to show, respectfully judge, good cause and a meritorious defense. She That's said, what I asked her. She yeah. said her defense is that there's different amounts that your client assessed. Sir, please step outside, like now. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, now that's the first warning on phones. If it goes up again, you're gonna get a penalty fine. So please make sure everybody that your phones are off because it's so much of a distraction. Yeah, her argument is basically that the amounts that you was alleged were different and that she came to some agreement as to what the amount was is different than what the complaint your yeah. judgment was. And I have all the emails from American Santa Roofing that shows all the difference. Um, it started at 9,000, 16,000, 13,000. So I'm calling, asking why is it, are these are these discrepancies. They kept telling me, we're going to get someone to call you back. We're going to get, and at that point. So what is the amount that you claim was due? The, um, the amount that I claim was due, it was supposed to be the 6,000 that I withheld plus a $1,500 deductible because me and Zach worked that out. So it was actually a three thousand dollars deductible, but um, fifteen hundred dollars deductible. Well, if Zach worked it out, why we can't? Why didn't we just confirm with Zach that this, that's the amount that they've all agreed upon, and then just deal with it? And I, I he's the to... client. That's America Standard himself. Apparently, I'd be willing to adjourn it to let that occur. Because we certainly, I mean, if it's all paid off now, the agreement, agree it, then we could just. Judge, I do want to make it clear. I represent them. I, she should not be contacting my my, my clients. She well, knew. she, I don't know when she did that. She's not doing it now, but she, she said she did it. After the receipt of the complaint. It's, it's, it's but so, Judge, I, I want to make it clear. Our position is she's in default. She has to show good cause. Her argument is. Okay, her good cause is that she was out of town. And didn't get the complaint. In Which time. all occurred before our motion for alternative service and tacking it on her door. That tacking was service, whether she got it or not. What makes this argument egregious is she got it and called me. I asked her to get a lawyer. I implored her to get a lawyer. No lawyer. Ignored it and in default. Why do I have to get a lawyer when I have to pay Okay. And then, and, and you're, well, you're, I'm not going to do an injustice and it would be a manifest injustice if this is not the right amount. And I just don't know. She claims she has documentation there to support it, that she talked with your client and that they came to some agreement about what was supposed to be paid. Now, that's only fair. And, and we want to get him in here, whoever he is from the company to talk to tell us that. Sure. That's great. Sure. And if he says, no, that's not right, then maybe Mr. Fault should stand. But at this point, um, 
the, I think there's some question, especially when she's saying she has information from the client himself that said they worked this out. This is not just her saying this is what I think. This is what she's saying that the client agreed to with her. And so I need to know what his position is on this. And so what I'll do is I'm gonna, I'm not gonna grant the motion yet, but I will adjourn it over and we can what's his name? Oh, Zach. Zach, yeah, let's let's get Mr. Zach in here and have him tell us. Judge, he he resides in Chicago. Well, okay, well, he can get on Zoom. That's what we get to. Him. Judge, I do want the record to be clear. Under Michigan law, she has not shown good cause. That's up to me to make that. No, I understand. I'm just making a record. I'm just making the record. And she has not submitted the requisite affidavit. People, but she's given me enough information to make me question it. I'm not granting the motion, just so that's clear. I'm not granting your motion because what you're asking me to do is telling me to get enough information to set this aside to go to trial. Okay. And I don't know if that's what you're trying to do is go to trial, but I do want to know why you have emails from the client himself saying, okay, yeah, this is what we're agreeing upon. And you released your last $6,000 and that everybody agreed that takes care of it. And if that doesn't, we got this judgment out of here. I need to know what the answer to that is. Judgment. Uh, the court ordered her to give me a copy. Or maybe she sure. will give me a copy. I'm more than glad to review but, it. And another thing is your, uh, the complaint keeps is throughout the complaint, it states the insurance company paid the entire claim, which is inaccurate. The insurance company did not. And I have a letter stating it. So, well, what do you have there that you can take copies and share with him so that he can see what your client, okay. his client said to you? Because we can we can get some copies. This is a letter from the insurance company insurance to show that we was all on a three-way call and the payments that was made up. Yeah, I never I'm a judge. Thank you. No, you made it back. My car is khaki. Yes. Yes. Oh, great. 35 years in marriage. I did two nine golden children. And I'm down to the same. It's not at the business court. And judge for the record, she had to be a letter from Karen and Sandra. Somebody wrote it to me. I mean, this is the head of elections. Um, you have an outstanding balance of fourteen thousand seven hundred fifty-eight dollars. Yeah, put our probation. Yes. Your hand oh, but what about this? What is that? Yeah, what would you have to do? Invoice. And then she has a from National General Insurance Company. Apparently, checks were issued to her for twenty-two hundred ninety. Got to be insane. She does. She does. Yeah, she <laughs> I don't know what all that means. It would be in a vacuum for me at this point. That's why I need to understand it. I haven't seen any of it, and I need to understand it. And I need the client to verify what's going on with this. So we'll get you copies of that. Okay. So so that everybody has a copy. Make two copies. Make one for me. Yeah. Yeah. Right, here with other copies that shows the different amounts that they do want. Okay. Yes. Yes. All right, so give me a date, Jessica. Uh, courts available. July 16th at uh, 9 a.m. Um, I'm going to be in New York City the entire week on vacation. Are you entitled? Let's go <laughs> another day. Um, courts available July 26th at 1.30. July 26th at 1.30? Yeah. Is that good for both? 
but I push it one only because that day I have a major settlement conference. Okay. I'm just not gonna write it till we get it for sure. Right. What, what, what's the, the next two weeks of August out in Georgia and we're in South Carolina? Okay. Thank you. Um, so courts available August 22nd at 1 30. Oh. Oh. August 22nd, 1 30. Okay. Okay, good. That gives us plenty of time to work through it. And I'm, a, I'm expecting that you all will both do that once uh, Mr. Leonard gets a real good chance to review the documents, talk to his client, and then we'll come back and we'll have the client present to explain to the court for his view of what was said. Um, and we'll we probably be able to resolve it hopefully on that date. So that'll conclude the matter for today. And we'll come back, we'll send the notice out for August 22nd at 1 30. Judges, is the court ordering my client to be present or representative? Yeah, you know, he could come on soon. That's fine. Doesn't have to actually be here physically as long as he's seen everything, you've talked to it. That's fine. <laughs>